Hello, today we'll be going through practice questions 21 to 30 for the CompTIA Server Plus exam. Let's begin. Which of the following policies would be best to deter a brute force login attack? The correct answer is D. Account Lockout Threshold An account lockout threshold policy locks a user account after a set number of failed login attempts making brute force attacks significantly harder by limiting the number of guesses an attacker can make before being locked out. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Password complexity. While a complex password makes brute force attacks more difficult, it does not directly prevent repeated login attempts. B. Password reuse. Preventing password reuse enhances security, but does not stop brute force attacks which involve guessing passwords rather than using old ones. C. Account age threshold. Setting an account age threshold ensures passwords are changed periodically, but it does not deter brute force attempts on active accounts. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Account lockout threshold. A server technician is deploying a server with 8 hard drives. The server specifications call for a rate configuration that can handle up to 2 drive failures but also allow for the least amount of drive space lost to rate overhead. Which of the following rate levels should the technician configure for this drive array? The correct answer is C, rate 6. Rate 6 provides fault tolerance for up to two drive failures while minimizing storage loss due to rate overhead. It achieves this by using dual parity, meaning that two drives are dedicated to parity and the remaining drives store data. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Rate 0. Rate 0 offers no fault tolerance. If one drive fails, all data is lost. B. Rate 5. Rate 5 can only tolerate one drive failure, not two, making it unsuitable for the requirement. D. Rate 10. Rate 10 provides fault tolerance, but it requires 50% of the total storage for mirroring, which results in higher storage overhead compared to rate 6. Therefore, the correct answer is C, rate 6. Which of the following should an administrator use to transfer log files from a Linux server to a Windows workstation? The correct answer is D, SCP. SCP is the best option for transferring log files from a Linux server to a Windows workstation securely. It uses SSH for encryption and authentication, ensuring a safe file transfer. Why the other options are incorrect? A, Telnet. Telnet is used for remote command line access but does not support file transfers and is insecure. B. Robocopy. Robocopy is a Windows-only command used for copying files but does not work on Linux servers. C. Xcopy. Xcopy is another Windows-based file copying tool that cannot transfer files from Linux to Windows. Therefore, the correct answer is D, SCP. Users in an office lost access to a file server following a short power outage. The server administrator noticed the server was powered off. Which of the following should the administrator do to prevent this situation in the future? The correct answer is D. Connect the server to a UPS. An uninterruptible power supply provides backup power during short outages, allowing the server to stay online or shut down gracefully, preventing unexpected downtime. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Connect the server to a KVM. A KVM switch allows managing multiple servers but does not provide power backup. B. Use cable management. Proper cable management improves organization but does not prevent power-related issues. C. Connect the server to a redundant network. A redundant network ensures network availability but does not keep the server powered during outages. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Connect the server to a UPS. Which of the following describes the installation of an OS contained entirely within another OS installation? The correct answer is D. Guest. A guest OS is an operating system that runs entirely within another OS inside a virtualized environment. It is managed by a hypervisor and operates independently from the host OS. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Host. The host OS is the primary operating system that runs on the physical machine and manages virtual machines. B. Bridge. 
A bridge is a networking concept that connects two networks, not related to OS installation. C. Hypervisor. A hypervisor is the software that enables virtualization by managing multiple guest OS instances, but it is not the guest OS itself. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Guest. A server technician is installing a Windows Server OS on a physical server. The specifications for the installation call for a 4TB data volume. To ensure the partition is available to the OS, the technician must verify the... The correct answer is B. Volume is formatted as GBT. To support a 4TB data volume, the partition must be formatted as GPT. MBR is limited to 2TB per partition, making it unsuitable for this requirement. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Hardware is Wi-Fi compliant. Wi-Fi is required for boot partitions on GPT disks, but is not necessary for a 4TB data volume. C. Volume is formatted as MBR. MBR supports a maximum partition size of 2TB, which would prevent the creation of a 4TB volume. D. Volume is spanned across multiple physical disk drives. While spanning could increase capacity, it is not required to create a single 4TB partition if using GPT. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Volume is formatted as GPT. An administrator is configuring a server that will host a high-performance financial application. Which of the following disk types will serve this purpose? The correct answer is A. SAS SSD. For high-performance financial applications, SAS SSDs are the best choice because they offer high speed, low latency, and enterprise-grade reliability. Why the other options are incorrect? B. SATA SSD. While SATA SSDs are faster than traditional HDDs, they have higher latency and lower throughput than SAS SSDs, making them less suitable for high-performance applications. C. SAS drive with 10,000 RPM. A 10,000 RPM SAS HDD is much slower than an SSD, resulting in higher latency and lower IOPS. D. SATA drive with 15,000 RPM. SATA drives do not support 15,000 RPM speeds. Only SAS HDDs reach such speeds. Even at 15,000 RPM, a HDD cannot match the performance of an SSD. Therefore, the correct answer is A. SAS SSD. Which of the following DR testing scenarios is described as verbally walking through each step of the DR plan in the context of a meeting? The correct answer is D. Tabletop. A tabletop disaster recovery test involves verbally walking through each step of the DR plan in a meeting setting. Participants discuss roles, responsibilities, and responses to hypothetical disaster scenarios without executing any real failover. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Live failover. A live failover test involves switching operations to a backup system in a real-world environment, not just discussing the steps. B. Simulated failover. A simulated failover test involves mimicking a disaster scenario and performing some level of system activation, but without fully shifting operations. C. Asynchronous. Asynchronous typically refers to data replication, not a DR testing scenario. It involves delayed data synchronization between primary and backup sites. Therefore, the correct answer is D, tabletop. A server administrator has noticed that the storage utilization on a file server is growing faster than planned. The administrator wants to ensure that, in the future, there is more direct relationship between the number of users using the server and the amount of space that might be used. Which of the following would best enable this correlation? The correct answer is C. Disk quotas. Disk quotas allows the administrator to set storage limits per user, ensuring a direct relationship between the number of users and storage usage. This helps control excessive storage consumption and prevents individual users from using disproportionate amounts of space. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Partitioning. Partitioning divides a disk into separate sections but does not limit user storage consumption. B. Deduplication. Deduplication reduces duplicate data, saving space, 
but does not enforce storage limits on individual users. D. Compression. Compression reduces file sizes but does not directly control how much space each user can consume. Therefore, the correct answer is C. Disk quotas. We have come to the end of today's video. Please make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. Goodbye.